This Econometrics video covers assumptions in time series models. By the end of this video, you should be able to assess whether a time series model satisfied the regression assumptions and explain problems caused when a time series model violates one or more assumptions. Uh, to motivate this discussion, uh, let's ask a, a real world question. Uh, has trade with Asia adversely impacted the United States economy? Uh, you can imagine a number of different ways to approach this from an econometric perspective, but let me propose one model we might estimate. Let's suppose we regress the United States unemployment rate on Japan's industrial production index. Now, if beta 1 were positive, that might suggest that uh, greater economic activity in Asia, uh, and uh, perhaps that would include trade with the U.S., uh, would be associated with a higher unemployment rate uh, in the U.S., uh, so it, it turns out that if we were to estimate this model on a uh, data set spanning the last several decades, uh, you would indeed find that the estimated beta 1 is positive, and with this uh, standard regression, uh, you uh, would be able to conduct a hypothesis test and find that that uh, positive uh, uh, relationship is indeed statistically significant at uh, traditional levels. Um, however, before we uh, draw conclusions, uh, I'd like to, to point out that we should be, uh, like any uh, model, we should be asking uh, whether the model we've written down satisfies uh, the necessary assumptions. And specifically, I'm referring to the Gauss-Markov assumptions. So hopefully you're familiar with the Gauss-Markov assumptions, at least for cross-sectional data, which are shown here. Uh, we won't go over, the, over them in detail. Uh, but recall briefly that uh, the Gauss-Markov theorem guarantees that if these assumptions are met, then uh, ordinarily squares regression is the best linear unbiased estimator. Uh, and so if any of these assumptions are violated, we should be concerned that the results of our OLS model could either be biased or they could be inefficient, uh, both of which uh, could cause a concern. Uh, now these assumptions do change slightly when we have time series data rather than cross-sectional data. Uh, so here they are for time series data. Uh, and again, we won't go over each one in detail. Uh, one thing to notice is that uh, we are now uh, showing an ADL model, an autoregressive distributed lag model, uh, and so we have uh, lags of the dependent variable Y and the independent variable X. Uh, there are a few other uh, minor details uh, that have changed throughout, uh, but the one that is most relevant here is uh, number two. Uh, the cross-sectional version uh, had assumed that uh, the independent and dependent variables were independent and identically distributed draws from a random distribution. Uh, this new assumption is a little bit weaker uh, because recall from uh, the video introducing time series modeling, uh, we noted that time series variables are rarely uh, independent. Uh, so this assumption is a little bit weaker but also a bit more complex. Uh, so the assumption is that the random variables x uh, yt and xt have a stationary distribution, and uh, that uh, the variables y and x at time t and those same variables uh, j periods earlier uh, become independent as that lag length j uh, gets large. Uh, so we're going to take uh, some time to try and wrap our heads around uh, exactly uh, what this assumption means. Uh, so let's start with uh, the idea of stationarity. Uh, so it said, uh, the assumption said that uh, both X and Y had to be stationary uh, variables. So uh, the definition is that a time series YT is stationary if its probability distribution does not change over time. It can be a little bit difficult to think about uh, what it means for a time series uh, to have a probability distribution that doesn't change over time. Uh, so let's consider a couple questions. Uh, if I asked you, what do you think the unemployment rate in the U.S. will be one year from today? Uh, you may be able to give me a guess, uh, but you would probably caveat that by noting that uh, well, there are many things that are uncertain uh, about what could happen in the next year. Um, and uh, because of those uncertainties, uh, we might say that the, the unemployment rate is something like a random draw from some probability distribution. Now, if I asked you instead uh, about the unemployment rate in the U.S. in the past, say one year ago, uh, we would, of course, be able to look that up in uh, the appropriate data set. Uh, however, even one year ago, um, you, could, uh, you could imagine that many different uh, economic factors went into determining that unemployment rate. And so we could think of the unemployment rate one year ago 
as uh, a random draw, a realized random draw from some distribution. And so essentially what we're asking, uh, if, if we want to know whether uh, unemployment rate is stationary, is whether the probability distribution that last year's unemployment rate was drawn from is the same as the probability distribution that next year's unemployment rate uh, will be drawn from. Uh, now, trying to determine whether a time series is stationary uh, based on the existing data is uh, something that's challenging. Uh, we'll uh, discuss a formal test of this in another video on non-stationarity, uh, but let's try and uh, build a, a deeper intuition uh, for uh, this idea uh, that um, we'd like to know whether a time series is stationary. So this graph shows uh, two different economic indicators. In green and on the left-hand axis, uh, we show the consumer price index in the U.S. So this is the price of a basket of goods can be used to measure inflation. On the right-hand side, uh, right-hand axis in, in the orange uh, curve, we show the United States unemployment rate in percent. Uh, so suppose we'd like to know whether um, one of these variables or both or neither are stationary. Um, again, it's difficult to think about a probability distribution when we're only looking at one realized value. And so what I'd like to do is perform a bit of a thought experiment. Uh, I'll start with uh, CPI, the Consumer Price Index. And I'd like to imagine what might have happened to CPI if it had realized uh, a, a different set of realizations of this random draw. Um, and so to do that, um, I have simulated a number of random draws of CPI. Now, I do want to caveat this by saying uh, I have made a very uh, simplistic model. I have no idea uh, what, uh, what would have happened in some other world. But you, you could imagine that if we started back in, in 1960, wherever the, the CPI was at the time, and uh, imagine that perhaps uh, all the different economic events that happened, the, the recessions, the uh, the booms, the various things that occurred um, still perhaps happened uh, or still were equally likely to happen, but perhaps they happened at different times. Uh, you could imagine because of that, uh, CPI might not follow that exact same path. Um, however, um, prices tend to increase over time uh, more than uh, decrease. And so I think uh, we would probably all be surprised if uh, we found that CPI uh, were tending to decrease. Uh, and so in these simulations, you'll see that uh, CPI is generally increasing even though they uh, uh, tend to increase at different rates and at different times. So if you think about uh, the probability distribution, uh, you could ask, well, is the probability distribution in 1970 the same as the probability distribution in the year 2000? Uh, and I hope you'll agree that uh, those distributions look quite different. Right, so the mean is uh, lower in 1970, and the, uh, the standard deviation or the spread is is lower, uh, and it's, uh, both of those quantities are higher in 2000. Uh, and so, if you believe uh, these simulations, that would suggest that uh, CPI is probably not stationary. In other words, it doesn't have the same distribution at different points in time. Uh, let's ask the same thing for uh, the unemployment rate. Uh, again, this is a simulation. Uh, based on a, a number of assumptions. I'm not claiming to have the, uh, the right model in mind, uh, but you could imagine that if there were different uh, economic events that occurred at different points in time, perhaps we might have gotten uh, different uh, troughs and different spikes in uh, the unemployment rate uh, at different points in time. Um, so uh, if you take a look at, at this graph and ask the same question, so in 1970, what was the distribution of unemployment rate, and then you ask, well, in 2000, what was the distribution of unemployment rate? You might notice that, well, they have about the same mean and about the same standard deviation, and so you might argue that unemployment rate is at least more likely to have a stationary distribution uh, and that uh, perhaps we, we really are drawing from uh, the same random draw over time. Uh, I do just want to point out again that this is something that is quite difficult to determine from uh, the, the realized time series, the actual data on CPI and unemployment, uh, but perhaps you can at least see that uh, consumer price index is something which is probably going to continuously uh, increase over time uh, for the most part, and, and so for that reason we may be able to uh, rule out the stationary of, stationarity of CPI, 
uh, whereas unemployment uh, is perhaps a bit less certain. Uh, the other condition that uh, had to hold in the Gauss-Markov assumptions uh, had to do with the autocorrelation uh, or the relationship uh, between a uh, variable and its lags. Uh, so we said that uh, y and x measured at time t and uh, those same variables measured j periods earlier ha had to become independent as j gets large. Uh, so one way we could think about this, uh, pick a variable like the unemployment rate, uh, you could first uh, ask, ask the question, what type of autocorrelation is there when uh, j, the, the lag length, is 1? So do you think the unemployment rate at time t is independent of the unemployment rate uh, one period earlier, perhaps one quarter earlier? Uh, probably the answer to that is no. Uh, we've already discussed how uh, time series variables tend to be quite dependent. Um, we would probably think that uh, un the unemployment rate in one quarter is probably highly correlated to the unemployment rate uh, in the previous period. Uh, however, we could ask, uh, is the unemployment rate at time t independent of the unemployment rate uh, two periods earlier, two quarters earlier? Uh, I think our response would probably be that, uh, you know, we think they're probably still not independent, but perhaps the relationship between these two is a bit weaker. Uh, so what if instead of uh, two quarters, uh, we asked uh, about 12 quarters earlier. Uh, well, now perhaps uh, that we're, because we're talking about a three-year gap, uh, it may be that the relationship between these two unemployment rates is much weaker. So you could imagine that as we increase this lag length, uh, we could plausibly argue that variables like the unemployment rate are going to become uh, independent or at least become closer to independent uh, as we get to these longer lag lengths. Uh, so just to revisit our motivating question, has trade with Asia adversely impacted the U.S. economy? Uh, and we talked about estimating this model uh, and finding that uh, they're using OLS, there was a statistically significant positive relationship between the U.S. unemployment rate and Japan's industrial production index. However, before we draw any conclusions from that information, we really should be revisiting the Gauss-Markov assumptions and in particular, when we focus on uh, the stationarity assumption, we should be asking, is the U.S. unemployment rate stationary? We should also ask, is Japan's industrial production index stationary? Uh, and finally, that autocorrelation condition, we should ask, uh, are these variables independent of their lags for large lag lengths? If the answer to any of these three questions is no, then we have violated one of the Gauss-Markov assumptions. And that also means that uh, the estimates from our model are no longer guaranteed to be unbiased and efficient. Uh, this should raise uh, a large concern that we have not formally uh, tested for stationarity or for the uh, independence uh, across these lag lengths. Uh, and so uh, the bottom line is that we should be very cautious. Uh, so this video will not uh, formally test that, uh, but it will be covered in a, a, another video on non-stationarity.